Honestly, in a show that's as wibbly-wobbly as Doctor Who is, is it any surprise that foreshadowing is extremely common? But to be fair, that doesn't mean it's always obvious. I'm Will for Who Culture, and here are 10 clever moments of foreshadowing you probably missed in Doctor Who. 10. Everything is dangerous. Poor old Danny Pink really didn't have much luck during his time on Doctor Who. With his tragic military backstory, his bumpy relationship with Clara, and ultimately his death, which came about when he was struck by a car while crossing the road. It was a shocking moment, because no one expected him to die so suddenly, let alone in such a quote-unquote boring manner, as Clara describes it. And yet, eerily, Danny's death was actually foreshadowed by the Twelfth Doctor a couple of episodes earlier, in a quick line of dialogue from Kill the moon. While traversing the surface of the moon through the episode, Clara expresses worry at how dangerous their current situation is, mainly out of concern for Courtney, a young schoolgirl who was tagged along on this particular adventure. In response, the Doctor reminds her that everything in life has the potential to be dangerous, citing scenarios such as eating chips and crossing the road. In the moment, the Doctor's response just seems like his typical nonchalant, jokey attitude toward any sort of peril, but in hindsight, it was clearly a deliberate piece of force foreshadowing for Danny Pink's untimely end. 9. The Daleks Behind the Curtain The Doctor's greatest foes made their long-awaited return in the first series of the 2005 revival, with a lone Dalek squaring off against Christopher Eccleston's ninth Doctor in the sixth episode, aptly titled Dalek. Then, in the two-part finale, a plot twist revealed that an entire legion of Scarrow's finest had somehow survived the destruction of the Time War. With the Doctor and his allies forced to take part in a series of deadly game shows as part of a Dalek scheme. Now, there aren't many clues throughout Series 1 that hint at this behind the curtain Dalek presence, but a subtle, rather brilliant one was hidden right at the start of Bad Wolf, the first episode in the two-part finale. After the 100 years later title card, the Doctor bursts out into the main room of the Big Brother house. Here, look at the wall on the right-hand side of the shot to see some paintings hanging on the wall. Paintings that just so happen to bear those iconic Dalek bumps worn on the outside of each of the Daleks' metal casing. While this sort of thing might seem obvious when some someone points it out, it really isn't obvious at all while watching the episode normally. Our attention naturally focuses on the Doctor, making any other details in the frame easy to miss. 8. Amy Pond the Pirate The Curse of the Black Spot is a meaningless throwaway episode overall. It doesn't really contribute to anything in the ongoing arc of Series 6, and its plot is so thin that the Boatswain, one of the supporting pirate characters, literally vanishes midway through, only to re-emerge at the end with no explanation. It's a fun episode though, with several memorable moments scattered throughout. The best of these being a scene where a no-nonsense Amy Pond brandishes a sword at the Doctor and Rory's pirate captors, scaring them half to death. As it turns out though, this moment isn't as throwaway as the rest of the episode that surrounds it. It's actually a neat piece of foreshadowing for the 10th episode of the series, the phenomenal The Girl Who Waited. During that episode, Amy is trapped in a faster time stream, forcing her to live in the two streams facility alone for several decades. She has to fend for herself and fight off hordes of sinister handbots, and in doing so, she relies on her favoured weapon, a weapon that the Curse of the Black Spot established her affinity for, a sword. It's a subtle bit of character to work that connects the two episodes, retroactively lending Amy's piratey antics more weight than they initially seemed to have. 7. Pizza Geronimo When the Doctor is trapped, vulnerable, and in desperate need of help, who do they call? Well, if you've lived for thousands of years, there's probably an infinite amount of phone numbers that come to mind. But in the 2009 Easter special, Planet of the Dead, the 10th Doctor decides to give his old pals at Unit a buzz. Stuck on a barren desert with no obvious way to escape, 10 hopes that Unit can offer him some much-needed assistance. But on his first attempt, he accidentally dials the wrong number, phoning up a random pizza place in Instead. For obvious reasons, most viewers won't think that the name of this pizza place is particularly important. But since I'm bringing it up here, you can probably guess that it is. It actually foreshadows the impending arrival of the 11th Doctor, or more specifically, his favourite catchphrase, Pizza Geronimo. Considering that the word Geronimo is just too specific for it to be a coincidence, there's no way this wasn't a nod to Smith's incoming Doctor, and due to the slightly muffled nature of the dialogue, most people missed it entirely. 6. Smoke of the Raven. The Twelfth Doctor's adventure with a Shildir in The Woman Who Lived basically consisted of these two immortals discussing why eternal life sucks. Well, to be fair, it's a Shildir who does the bulk of the complaining, constantly reminding the Doctor that all the mortals around them will eventually die. How cheery. In describing the inevitable loneliness that faces them both, a Shildir tells the Doctor that the people around him, drawing specifically
specific attention to Clara will blow away like smoke, which sounds like an unusually particular way to describe someone's passing, and that's because it is. Flash forward a few episodes to Face the Raven, and Clara has reached the end of her life at the claws of the titular bird. When it strikes her, she lets out an enormous scream of pain, and what pours out of her mouth a few seconds later? That's right, a cascade of thick black smoke, almost like her life force is leaving her body. It's not an easy clue to pick up on in the moment, but Ashilde's description of mortality beautifully foreshadows Clara's heartbreaking demise. 5. The Sky Has No Stars Series 4 was stuffed to the gills with ongoing story arcs, each of which were signposted multiple times throughout the series' 13 episode run. The return of Rose, Donna's Time Beetle, the disappearing bees, and of course the missing planets. As revealed in the finale, the missing planets were caused by the Daleks, who had taken them out of time and space and moved them into the Medusa Cascade. This was done in order to power their reality bomb, which if detonated would destroy planets, solar systems, and galaxies. Every ounce of matter in the multiverse. In other words, the stars in the sky would start to disappear, an ominous scenario that was sneakily foreshadowed in the previous year's Christmas special, Voyage of the Damned, where an excited Astrid Perth, upon taking a quick trip down to the surface of the Earth, points to the air and proclaims, look, no stars in the sky. At first, it sounds like she's referring to a simple cloudy evening, but on reflection, this was clearly an early hint that the reality bomb could have already penetrated certain corners of the multiverse, as later seen in Season 4's Turn Left, where the stars begin to vanish from the sky right before Wilf and Donna's eyes. 4. Famous Last Words In typical spy movie fashion, Series 12's opener Spyfall was chock full of misdirection and double-crossing, most notably with the reveal that apparent good guy O is actually the latest incarnation of the Master. While many fans had predicted that he was the Master before Spyfall even aired, he'd been a popular pick to play the Doctor for years, this twist revealed was cleverly signalled with the episode itself, in the surprise reaction of Stephen Fry's short-lived character C at the moment of his death. Right before he's struck with a lethal bullet, C is telling the 13th Doctor about the possibility that corporate bigwig Daniel Barton is a double or triple agent, working for an evil mastermind. He's unable to finish this thought, however, slumping down on his desk after uttering his final word, oh. At first, it seems like a perfectly normal reaction to, you know, being shot in the neck. But here, the word, oh, also has another meaning. As we learn, Barton has formed an alliance with the Master, whose secret spy codename is, of course, O. In other words, C's final utterance works both as a surprised exclamation and an answer to the question of who Barton's villainous overlord could be. Very well played. 3. The Absent Sister Stephen Moffat's first contribution to New Who was a terrific empty child Doctor Dance's two-parter, a story that cemented the phrase, Are You My Mummy, into the nightmares of many a young fan. These episodes revolve around the mystery of the creepy gas mask child, and as we later learn, this child's real name is Jamie. Though he's framed as a villain, he really doesn't mean any harm. His only goal is to track down his mum, Nancy, which he successfully does at the end of the second episode. But because Nancy has spent the entire story telling everyone that Jamie is her brother, the fact that he's her son is treated as something of a twist reveal, a reveal that was foreshadowed by an easy-to-miss visual clue in The Doctor Dances. At the start of the episode, the ninth Doctor and co break into Jamie's room, which contains dozens of childish drawings littered around the place. These drawings all depict the same thing, Jamie's mother, crudely etched in crayon. Most importantly though, what isn't depicted in these drawings is Jamie's older sister, who Nancy claims to be, because of course, that's not true. The fact that Jamie only draws his mother other is a clue that Nancy was lying about her relationship with him. 2. The Suspicious Stairlift in an episode full of surprising moments, arguably the most surprising moment came at the very end, with the Doctor freeing Clara from the slimy clutches of a dream crab, only to discover that she's 62 years older than when they last met. Surprising, yes, but impossible to see coming? No. In fact, the old Clara reveal was pretty much given away right at the beginning of Last Christmas, with the second shot, literally the second shot of the episode, panning through Clara's house, where attentive viewers will be able to spot a stairlift running adjacent to her banister. The shot is so brief and the scene so darkly lit that this detail is genuinely difficult to pick up on, but there it is, right in plain sight. Moffat, you smug git. 
one. He will knock four times. The Tenth Doctor had quite a lot to worry about during his final few adventures. Cybermen in Victorian London, ravenous armed stingrays patrolling a barren desert, deadly drops of water, and of course, somebody banging on a door. Indeed, the end of Ten's life was prophesied to occur when an unknown individual knocks four times. A prophecy that eventually came true when lovable companion Wilfred Mott quadruple tapped on the glass of a radiation booth. It's one of the best twin moments in the show's history. And just to make the payoff even better, the whole four knocks thing was actually foreshadowed in an episode from over a year earlier, Series 4's chilling horror classic, Midnight. Here, the Doctor does battle with a mysterious, powerful creature that repeats everything it hears, including random sounds. At one point, the Doctor bangs on the door to try and get this creature's attention, and sure enough, it copies him perfectly, matching the rhythm and number of his knocks. And how many knocks is that? You guessed it, four. Showrunner Russell T. Davies would have undoubtedly been looking ahead to the 10th Doctor's exit while scripting Midnight, and it's hard to believe that such a specific moment was anything other than a cheekily placed piece of foreshadowing. In fact, even the BBC's official subtitles call attention to this one. And there you have it folks, 10 clever moments of foreshadowing you probably missed in Doctor Who. Feel free to drop this video a like if you enjoyed it, and drop me a follow on Twitter at usly.u. I'm Will for What Culture, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you next time.